first on CBS This Morning, an Olympic swimmer is speaking out about alleged abuse she suffered from a former Team USA coach. Ariana Cookers told police former coach Sean Hutchison sexually abused her and took thousands of nude photos of her while she was a minor. In an essay, she alleges Hutchison groomed and manipulated her from age 13. She says the abusive relationship spanned nearly a decade. As we reported last week, Homeland Security special agents searched Hutchinson's home in Seattle. They opened an investigation with Washington state authorities, but he has not been charged with a crime. The former Olympic coach recently stepped down as CEO of King Aquatics Club after Cookers went public. In a statement, Hutchison writes, quote, I absolutely deny having any sexual or romantic relationship with her before she was old enough to legally make those decisions for herself. Prior to that time, I did nothing to groom her. Ariana Cookers and her attorney, Robert Allard, are here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. And Ariana, I know you have said you never thought you would share this story. Why are you sharing it now? I didn't realize until a few weeks ago how important being open and speaking my truth was important to my healing process. And and it really has been a journey in so many ways. Um, I began therapy in October because I had reached a new, a, a low point. And I realized that while I have an amazing husband, an amazing life, an amazing support system, I hadn't fully faced what had happened to me. And, and for so long, writing what I wrote on Friday and publishing it was a huge step in my healing process, being able to put words to what happened to me. And and I don't think I realized until I published it Friday just how important that was to, to spread that message, but not only for myself to be able to finally stand up and speak my truth and, and say what happened to me, but the outpouring of messages that I've received the last few days has been so impactful. And I never thought that I would be here sitting at this table. And Ariana, <laughs> let's talk about that. Um, when did this abuse start? How old were you? So when he began grooming me, he started coaching me when I was 13 years old. Um, I would say the grooming began immediately. And there are so many definitions of what grooming is. How I understand it is the process that a predator takes to first psychologically take control over you, and then perhaps it turns into a physical relationship and How did he sexual. do that? So in many ways, I said this in my essay, um, every single day we had to shake his hand. And it seems like a simple, nice gesture, but it's getting contact with that person. It's shaking their hand and looking in their eyes. It's, you know, asking about things, not only from your swimming career, but what's life like with your family? Um, you know, what are you doing at school? What are you doing this weekend? Um, and it's creating this relationship where you rely on this person for everything and you go to him for everything. And so as he guided me through this relationship of manipulation and control, he fully had control over me and prepared me for each step. And also swimming is a one-on-one -on -one sport okay. and the better you do, you're rising together. Talk about that relationship. This isn't a team thing, this yeah. is just the two of you. Yes, and you know, swimming is known to be an individual sport and you spend so much time. And so when there were private meetings going on behind a closed hotel room door, you know, someone might look at that and think, oh, well, you know, they're just discussing race tactics or strategy or how to get better. But that is inappropriate. And those kind of conversations should not be taking place behind closed doors. And how do you get to the point where he's taking thousands of, of nude photos of you? Well, so the pictures, um, I obviously sent him some as well. Um, he took pictures of me both in the locker room. Um, when I was, I, I expressed that in my essay, he took pictures of me in the locker room. Um, Are and you this, a minor then? Yes. Mm -hmm. And those pictures went on over a decade. You told me a story about in 2009, you won the world, you set the world record. Yeah. Yes. And that kind of grooming and that relationship that goes on and you, yeah. why that continued. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think one of the hardest pieces maybe for someone to understand is, is how this took place for so long. And this process of gaining control over somebody, um, I've talked to so many parents and I've heard from so many parents these last few days and we have conversations with children about don't talk to strangers. Your privates are your own. They should not be touched by other people. But the conversation that I'm, I'm so hoping to have is what happens when there's a person that your parents see as a, a voice of authority that they fully trust, that your family trusts, that your community is praising. What happens when that person abuses that power and takes advantage of you? And that's an important conversation and dialogue that I hope that we can have. I, I feel the most vulnerable I've ever felt in my life in this moment, but I lift it up because of the messages I've received the last few days of parents saying, 
thank you for creating this dialogue between me and my kids. Because of this, I'm going home and understanding what this looks like and how I can talk to this with my, with my partner. Mariana, talk to yourself when you said you, you didn't recognize the young girl that you were. Imagine another young girl is in that position. What does she need to hear from you? The message that I want to send is that it doesn't matter what your abuse is. If it's, you know, there's so many people who sent messages who said, oh, my story's not as bad. There's no such thing as bad or good or less bad. If you are being abused, if somebody is taking advantage of you, I want you to know that no matter how you choose to find your voice, you will be heard. And there are so many amazing things that are happening in this world today that are, that are open and receptive to these conversations. I want, I want these people to know that they are amazing, that they don't have to rely on these, these predators, these, these people who take advantage of young people and abuse a relationship so horrifically. And you found yourself in this position today because of your love for swimming. Mm -hmm. Do you still love the sport? Do you still swim? Yes, I, I love the sport in every way that you can imagine. I've received so many messages from teammates and coaches and friends and people who, who grew up watching my career. And, and I said this in my story, that black line, that, that space that you talk to, and eventually that line starts talking back. Um, I love swimming, and, and I'm not here to necessarily share my story. What I'm here is to prevent this from happening to the next person who is trying to chase their dreams, who's trying to show up as their best self every single day. Because you don't have to rely on a man, or another human being, who wants to take responsibility for your success, who wants to be there every step of the way. And, and one of the biggest, biggest things that, that these predators do is, is they isolate you, they single you out. The things he told me constantly were, you're the most impressive person I've ever met. I see things in you that your sisters don't see in you, that your parents don't see in you. And because of that isolation, they put you on a pedestal and they put you there so that nobody can help you. And I want, I want people to know that you don't, have to, you don't have to hear those words to be amazing and to be great and show up as your best self every single day. Surround yourself. My, my tribe of people, my husband, who I'm bringing through this with me, he has been my rock and he has showed up for me every single day because he believes in this message. He believes it's, that it's important, not only for the, the family that we hope to create, but for the next family, for every single person who, have, who has the opportunity to do this to somebody else. Well, Ariana, it will. It will make a difference because abuse fosters in silence and you are breaking that silence. So thank you so much for being here and sharing your story. Rob, thank, thank you. you for thank you being, being here with, alongside with, her. Thank you. I appreciate it.